Good afternoon. So eight years ago, when I was 14, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disorder of the thyroid. The thyroid is a butterfly-shaped gland right here near your throat. And what happens when you have Hashimoto's is that your thyroid hormones are not being produced in the correct amounts. Not only that, but also your body is attacking itself. So you have things called thyroid antibodies, which are antibodies that develop when your immune system mistakenly targets components of the thyroid gland or thyroid proteins, and it prevents the thyroid hormone production process from happening correctly, and it leads to chronic inflammation of the thyroid. Another thing that's happening when you have Hashimoto's is that your brain, the, the pituitary gland, produces a hormone called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. And this sends a message to our thyroid to produce T3 and T4, which are the two main hormones that, that regulate the thyroid. And when you have Hashimoto's, your brain is producing TSH in massive amounts generally, but your body is not responding to it. So you fluctuate between having not enough thyroid hormone and too much, not enough and too much, not enough and too much. All the while your brain is sending this message to produce, 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 but your body's not responding. So your thyroid regulates your energy levels, regulates your temperature, affects your emotions and your clear thinking. And so the biggest symptoms of Hashimoto's are lethargy, just absolute exhaustion, apathy, and just brain fog feeling like you can't go on because of course when your body is absolutely exhausted it will affect your emotions it will affect your brain it will affect every area of your life um yeah there are so many other symptoms too i know women and others who have struggled with hair loss and um just a lot of a lot of intense things um and so Okay, I saw a doctor when I was diagnosed and um, was told that I would have to be on a hormone replacement pill for the rest of my life. And this is commonplace in the Western medical tradition. You are told if you have Hashimoto's that you need to be on levothyroxine, which is the generic, or Synthroid, which is the name brand. And what this, this hormone replacement does is it gives you T4. And T4, ideally, converts to T3, and then your hormones are regulated and you're, you're fine, you're fixed. Um, but that doesn't always happen. In fact, it usually doesn't work that way. Um, and what's interesting is that in, in the West, in, in developed countries, autoimmune disorders run rampant. The levels are much higher than in countries of the global south. And this is a fact but there's not that much research being done on why. Autoimmune disorders are kind of just this big mystery, whether it's diabetes or arthritis or whatever autoimmune disorder out there, it's sort of like, oh yeah, we don't know how you got it and you can't cure it, so just do this. But there's not a lot of research as to why they develop. Um, one theory that I found online is about how one of the reasons they may be, the cases may be higher in developed countries than in countries of the global south is because when we are born, we are usually given vaccinations and our whole, our early lives are very sterile, um, right? Starting from our birth, our birth itself is sterile and everything after is sterile. We're usually indoors, not as exposed to the elements. Therefore, our body does not have a chance to distinguish between what is us and what is not us. So that's one interesting theory. Um, another, yeah, so so that's, that's a theory. And I've also found a lot of um, books and and people taking holistic approaches to healing. And so I've been trying to, to follow a somewhat holistic approach to healing. However, I still am on a thyroid replacement hormone. It is not Synthroid or Levothyroxine. It is this compound formula. So this one has both T3 and T4 in it. And the idea is that in case the T4 doesn't convert to T3, it has T3 as well. Um, but I was able to get this through seeing a naturopathic doctor um, and not everyone has access to seeing a naturopathic doctor because they are insanely expensive and more often than not outside of insurance. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the reality of it. And I wanted to 
talk about really briefly a book that I have read. I haven't finished the book. I've read parts of it. It's called Autoimmune Wellness. It's by two women who have had autoimmune disorders and have been able to go through a healing process through managing it with, um, with sleep and with herbs and exercise and eating and, and all of these things. And I, I found what I've read really cool and I like their vibe. But I will say that what I have found in almost all of the research I've done on Hashimoto's and doctors that I've seen who are trying to take a holistic approach, it's all about what you put in your body and never about what you're putting out. And what I mean by that is there's a focus on what you eat and the supplements you're taking. And I agree that this is essential to healing. However, as someone who has struggled with an eating disorder, it's daunting to think that the only way to heal Hashimoto's is through a really restrictive diet where you cut out a lot of things and bring in other things and, and, and that's the only path to healing. It's daunting to think that. What I have found is that there's also a connection between our throat chakra, which is right here, and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So in the system of chakras, there are eight throughout our body. And the fifth chakra is Vishuddha, and it is your throat chakra, and the color is blue. And this little chart was made by a Kundalini teacher of mine. Basically, if your throat chakra is malfunctioning, some things you may experience are lethargy, weakness in language, feeling shy, voice problems, insecurity, fear of opinions, lack of expression, problems with throat, neck, voice, and thyroid. If it is functioning, you will be truthful, a good communicator, authentic, healthy self-expression, inspiring, teacher, power of word. So there is a connection here, undoubtedly, between getting in touch with your throat chakra, opening it up, sharing your truth, being candid about who you are, and having Hashimoto's. Another quick thing that's on this train that I want to mention is if we think about what an autoimmune disorder is, it's our cells attacking our own cells. It's self-sabotage. So we can think about where we do this in our minds, where our minds are shaming ourselves, where we've learned all these patterns throughout our life, where we've been taught them, in fact, because this, this, this culture does not teach us how to love ourselves. It does not teach us how to be kind to ourselves, and it doesn't teach us how to be kind to others either. But yeah, if our thoughts are creating our reality and we're self-sabotaging in our mind, then that has implications in our body. Okay, but this is also related to the throat chakra because I have found that as part of my healing journey um, in learning to manage Hashimoto's, sharing my truth gives me energy. When I am able to speak from my gut and, and bring it forward and be honest about who I am and what I'm feeling and the things that I am sensing, then I am energized. And if one of the biggest symptoms of Hashimoto's is this apathy, this exhaustion, complete fatigue, and sharing truth energizes me, then there must be a connection here. So to anyone out there who is struggling with Hashimoto's or who who isn't but who has a lot of fatigue in their life I encourage you to really get in touch with your throat chakra and find ways to open it up whether that's through through writing through painting through Having good conversations with friends through setting boundaries from a place of love really setting boundaries that one's huge as well learning to set boundaries um, or through singing for me singing has been especially powerful as someone who was told her whole life that she could not sing and just remembering that I can, and that so can you, that everyone can sing, that we were born to speak and to sing. So yeah, that's been, that's been a big part of my process. And um, I just wanted to share where I was at in my journey. And, and that, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll update in the future about how this process is going for me. But I really encourage anyone and everyone to speak their truth because that is what we need to heal and what more of this world needs to heal. Okay, I will close by saying that in a book called Women Who Run With the Wolves by Clarissa Pinkola Estes, one of the quotes that she has is, she who learns to howl will find her pack. 
I'm howling. And I invite any of you who are struggling with Hashimoto's to start howling as well. <laughs>